Hi, welcome to my YouTube video. Today I'll be doing an SQL overview. Just a beginner's guide to SQL and if you are new to SQL, you're going to find this video very, very important in your SQL journey. And I'm going to be speaking about SQL. What is SQL? Databases. What are databases? SQL command types. What are the different command types we have in SQL? Um, SQL use cases. Just the basic use cases that you need to know to get started with SQL. And SQL joins. This video is necessary for those that are getting started with SQL, trying to understand the basic, the surface view of SQL before knowing if to spend more time into learning SQL script, how to manipulate data with SQL and doing other things with SQL. And I know you find this video very, very useful. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to help me to do more of those videos. And I'm just going to get started. Before you do anything around SQL, you need to understand databases. What is a database? This is a question almost everyone asks about SQL. A database is an organized collection of data that is stored and can be easily accessed, managed and updated. So just think about a digital filing system where information is stored in a structured way for efficient retrieval and use. And by structured, I mean um, in a relational context. Relational table is an um, arrangement of data in rows and in columns. If you've used an Excel, you have an understanding of what a relational table is. And SQL is like that digital filing system where information is stored in rows and in columns. It's as simple as that. And that is database. Getting that off, so SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And when you think about query is to retrieve information, is to um, engage in a task to get information retrieved. SQL lets you to access and manipulate databases. And just like I said, database is a filing system for structured data. And SQL helps you to access and manipulate this data within databases. And SQL as a robust database tool, it enables essential operations like creating, managing, and fetching data within relational databases. It stands as the standardized language for manipulating data in a database management system. I know this can sound a bit confusing, especially if this is the first time you are trying to learn about this. And even those that have worked with SQL, sometimes they still struggle to, to understand what SQL means, where, where does it sit and how do all of these things come into play? I'm going to be using an anecdote to explain this in more detail. SQL and databases. So what I want you to do is to think about the library system. In a library, you've got the library building, what you call the library. You go into the library and everything happens within that building. You have the bookshelves. And these bookshelves, they hold books. And I'm just using this anecdote to explain SQL, just to be able to break it down for you to be able to connect it to what you know. And I believe everybody, if not everybody, most people have either been to a library, seen a library, or have an understanding of what a library means. So in the library, there's the bookshelves, which is the second picture I have here. And in the bookshelves, you have the books well arranged and some arranged in columns and the shelves are well labeled to give guidance. Some are labeled as science books, bookshelf, some fictions, non-fictions and different categories of labeling are happening within libraries. The third image I have here is the library catalog. And the library system have a way to catalog data. Data can be cataloged based on the genre of the book, the author, the volume, the year of publication, different things are within the library catalog. And finally, you have the librarian. The librarian is able to go across the shelves, update books, look for books, retrieve a book for you, give it a book that you want, and all of this happens. And within this context, you have the library organizational system. And the library organizational system is everything that happens from the library building to the bookshelf, to the cataloging, to the librarian searching for books. All of this working together gives you the library organizational system. And I know that you have started connecting this to what SQL means. And if you are 
if you've used SQL, you can start matching a database to each of these and try to understand how these things work. But if you've not thought about it, I'm going to help. Think about the library as the database. And remember my definition of database is a filing system for organizing your data in a structured way. In a library, there are bookshelves well arranged and labeled, which I've mentioned. Similarly, within a database, there are tables with names. And these tables, just think of an Excel spreadsheet. A table is a relational object that has data arranged in rows and columns. And in a database, you have different tables. The database stores and organizes tables. And that is what the database does. The same way in a library, you've got shelves, bookshelves, well arranged. That is how you have the database with tables well arranged. So think about the bookshelf. So what is the bookshelf? Your guess is as good as mine. The bookshelf is the table. The bookshelf are like tables. Each book on the shelf represents a record in a database table. So if you have four bookshelves in a small library, what it means is you have a small database with four tables. And if you have 10 shelves within a library, think about it like you have 10 tables within a database. These shelves contain records, they contain books. The same way in tables, they contain records. And this record could be customer record, a product description, or any other piece of information as the case may be. And this is how you can think about it. It helps you to kind of understand. Now, what is the cataloging? In SQL, SQL, and in databases, there's what they call indexing. Indexing does the same thing cataloging does within a library catalog. It acts as an index providing a quick reference to the location of, a, of each book. In SQL, indexes help expedite expedite data retrieval, allowing for faster access to specific records. So we might go this, we might go more deeper into this in subsequent videos, but for now, just understand that indexing helps you to quickly retrieve data within a database. And finally, if you can guess what the librarian is, and it's so straightforward. The librarian is the SQL query. Hmm, never thought of that. So, the librarian's expertise lies in efficiently locating and managing information. So, SQL as the query language possesses the expertise um, to interact with databases seamlessly. When you start writing SQL queries, what you're doing is to, using the queries to act as librarian to give specific instructions to the tables within a database. As a matter of fact, you could combine records from one table to records from another table. You could combine two, three tables, and all of these have some form of relationship within a database. The clear difference between an Excel table and the tables in an in a database is the fact that tables in a database have a relationship where they can interact. And with SQL query, you can actually harness this relationship that different tables have to retrieve information across tables. And finally, the library organizational system is the RDBMS, the Relational Database Management System. It's the organization of all of these processes and you have different environments you have the tsql for microsoft um, sql server you have the mysql and all of these are just relationship database management systems so what can you do with sql this is not an exhaustive list as a matter of fact this is not even telling you 30% of what SQL can do. I just wrote this little piece just to give you 
a snippet of what you can do with SQL. You can execute queries against the database, which I've explained. You can retrieve data from a database. You can also create new tables in a database. You can do data aggregation within a database. You can insert records into a database. You can insert records in the tables in the database. You can update those records. So if you have a table that has four columns, you can actually add a new column. You can delete or drop a column. You can truncate the table, meaning you can erase all of the data within that table. And on the seventh one is you can create stored procedure in a database. Um, these are block of codes that can be executed. You can set permissions on tables, procedures, and views. You can also delete records from a database. You can create new databases. You can create views in a database. And finally, you can perform joins in a database. So SQL command types. What are the command types in SQL? Um, the first is you have the DDL. The DDL is stands for data definition language. This is used to define certain activities within SQL. With DDL, you can create, you can alter, you can drop, you can truncate, you can rename, and all of these activities can be done to a table. Can also be done, some of the activities can be done to a database. You can drop a database, you can create a database, and you can do a lot of things to a database. And you can do all of these to tables. You can rename, you can truncate, you can drop, you can alter, you can do a couple of things to a table. The data manipulation language, DML, is used to manipulate the data within a database. So you can actually insert, with the insert command, you're able to insert new records to a table. You can update, you can delete, you can merge. The DQL is the data query language you can use to um, the popular select statement. Select statement is going to be 80% um, of what, okay, this this is my this is my statistics 80 percent of what you might be doing within sql has to do around select statement because one of the major points of sql is to store data and retrieve this data and the way to retrieve the data is with the select statement that is a data query language you have the data control language you use it to grant and to revoke and remember when we talked about permission, you do a lot of things within tables in a database. And you have the TCL, the transaction control language for commit, rollback, and save point. And in subsequent videos I'm going to be making, I'll try my best possible to touch around all of these. Um, you're going to see use cases for this, read time on how to manipulate data, how to get information, how to grant, how to revoke, insert, update, delete, merge, and I'll try to do all of this within the subsequent videos and you'll have an idea on how these things work and how they can be implemented within your business context. SQL joins. Ah, this is one area of SQL you really can't run away from because tables interact with themselves. For tables to connect to another table and to interact, you need to join and there's the join statement there's the inner join in the inner join is all about intersection and the intersection is saying you get the information that exists between a and the information that exists between b and they intersect that is called the inner join the left join is saying bring all the data in table a and all the data that exists between table a and table b that's the left join. In the right join, it's saying, bring no data from A, that's the left table. Now, the only data you should bring from A, the left table, is the data that exists between left and right table. Then you return all the data that exists between table A. In full join, 
you bring it returns all the data that exists between left table and all the data that exists between right table and this function like the set theory in the set theory you're able to understand what are intersections what are unions what are um combination the full join you get to understand how all of this works if you have two tables you'll be able to retrieve all the information from the first table and some information from the second table and this is very very good for data analysis this is good for um transactional um manipulation and transaction data um in a in a company you might go to your bank and say i want to see my transaction two months ago or the last transaction that i did and if somebody needs to query that data within a database it has to work with different tables first is the dimension table that has your information all this table contains all of your personal information all information that are not changing that are dimensional and you have another table that contains the transactions and they will need to con connect that table create a relationship between your dimension table and the fact table that has the transaction and to be able to do that based on your request they are going to perform certain join activities and join activities are one of the things you experience when you're working with sql in my subsequent videos i'm going to be doing videos on joins i'll be doing videos on select insert and all the um sql command types and i'll also be making it very very relevant using use cases that would help you understand thank you see you in my next video cheers